This is CNN. CNN's coverage of the war continues now. I'm Molly McCoy. And I'm Dave Michaels. Welcome. Saudi Arabia came under Iraqi missile attack again just a short while ago. Two Patriots were fired to intercept and one apparently exploded a Scud missile's warhead. And we're told the all clear has now sounded in central Saudi Arabia. Early reports from the ground campaign say Allied forces met little resistance as they moved into Kuwait. ITN Sandy Gall was with Saudi troops as they smashed through Iraqi defenses. At dawn this morning, Saudi troops started moving across the desert on their mission to liberate Kuwait. Hundreds of tanks and armored personnel carriers, their crews raring to go, headed for the Kuwaiti border, apparently without a care in the world. Artillery and rocket launchers hammered the Iraqi defenses. Saudi armor moving across the desert on the first day of the ground offensive towards Kuwait. Just a few hundred yards up there is the berm, the big sand defenses put up by the Iraqis. They've smashed a way through that and they're on their way now. Saddam Hussein's much vaunted berm, a defensive barrier of sand bridges and ditches, turned out to be an anti-climax. There was no flaming oil as threatened by Saddam, no Iraqi resistance. This was the historic moment as the great army of Saudi tanks and armored personnel carriers ground their way onto Kuwaiti soil and fanned out across the desert. One Saudi soldier's views about Saddam seemed to be typical. We will fight him, we will kill him, we will destroy his uh, army and her, his force. The operation went like clockwork, the armored columns following a prearranged plan advancing on a broad front without meeting any resistance for several miles. They passed a litter of empty shell cases and shortly afterwards a shattered heavy artillery piece. Then they crossed the highway and rolled off across the desert again. 10 or 15 miles inside Kuwait, the lead Saudi column captured their first Iraqi prison. A white flag flew from the top of a ridge. One soldier held out a leaflet calling on Iraqi troops to surrender. Another slightly wounded kissed one of his captors in relief. Several had been hurt in the brief battle that preceded their capture. Disarmed and their hands bound, they were led off to captivity. Most of them seemed to be glad it was all over. At least they were alive and had managed to avoid what Saddam boasted would be the mother of all battles. Sandy Gall, ITN with Saudi troops inside Kuwait. There is much more of CNN's war coverage to come. Stay with us. Forces are punching into Kuwait and southern Iraq, and CNN has learned that in the first hours of the war, 11 U.S. soldiers were killed. Saudi forces moved into Kuwait early in the offensive. Pool reporters say they found empty Iraqi foxholes and took Iraqi prisoners. <laughs>
The commander of Operation Desert Storm, General Norman Schwarzkopf, says 5,500 Iraqis were taken prisoner in the first 10 hours of the offensive. Pool reporters with U.S. Marines in Kuwait say some soldiers encountered poison gas released by buried mines. But Schwarzkopf says early reports of chemical weapons are bogus. CNN has learned that the U.S. Army 7th Corps is moving into southern Iraq, west of the Republican Guard with British and French troops to the west of them. French officials say their troops have taken a thousand Iraqi prisoners inside Iraq. Pentagon sources tell CNN that so far there have been no major encounters with the Iraqi Republican Guard. Allied soldiers on the ground are being supported by artillery in Saudi Arabia. And the big guns of battleships in the Persian Gulf. Pool reporters say the USS Missouri has been lobbing shells at Kuwait, and they say that from sea, Kuwait appears to be on fire. Kuwaiti military sources say the Iraqis are blowing up major buildings in Kuwait City. Kuwait's news agency says allied forces are already in Kuwait City, but Pentagon sources tell CNN the Kuwaiti capital has not been taken, although they say that objective may be only hours away. A few hours ago, the leader of the offensive reported that the Allies had met only light Iraqi resistance, and he said Allied casualties have been extremely light. General Norman Schwarzkopf gave reporters the first official Allied assessment of the ground campaign. U.S. forces in this morning's attack were U.S. Marines, Army paratroopers, Army air assault forces, and Army special forces. These forces along with French and Arab forces, have already reached all of their first-day objectives and are continuing their attack. Early this afternoon, U.S. Army mechanized and armor forces, along with the forces of the United Kingdom, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Egypt, and Syria, also launched attacks, and they are moving north with great speed. Schwarzkopf did caution that his report came less than 12 hours into the offensive and was very preliminary. The Allied naval forces are taking aim at the coast of occupied Kuwait. Michael Nicholson reports on the USS Gl Missouri and the HMS Gloucester in the Persian Gulf. Close to the coast of Kuwait had been painstakingly cleared of mines by British and American minesweepers. Then, with destroyers and frigates from both navies, the convoy escorted the battleship to her battle station. Missouri served in the Pacific in the Second World War, saw the Japanese surrender. Now the enormous firepower of her 16-inch guns will force the Iraqis to do the same. She began the bombardment shortly after yesterday's ultimatum to Saddam Hussein had expired, targeting first on Iraqi installations of anti-aircraft batteries and bunkers sheltering thousands of Iraqi troops. But at dawn, with smoke from the fires along the Kuwaiti coast heavy on the sea, Missouri turned her guns on Kuwait City itself. It was timed to the beginning of the land offensive. She has been engaging a variety of targets uh, throughout the Kuwaiti coastline and littoral positions. Uh, and at the moment, uh, she's moving fire as required uh, to either support Allied movements, Allied troop movements, or the uh, positions in Kuwait itself. Warned that the land offensive could provoke the Iraqis to launch missiles with chemical warheads, all crew on deck put on their protective suits. Whether there is to be an eventual assault from the sea is something we don't know and certainly couldn't report. But the sudden arrival here of this battle group with such enormous firepower and so close to the coast is something the Iraqis could never have expected. It opens up a second front from the sea and ties down many thousands of Iraqi troops that are now desperately needed elsewhere. This is Michael Nicholson aboard HMS Gloucester off the coast of Kuwait. Tanks are playing a crucial role in the ground battle now underway in Kuwait. Ben Rooney is a former tank company commander with the British Army. He now writes on defense issues for the Sunday Telegraph. He joins us now from London. Welcome to CNN, Mr. Rooney. Um, General Schwarzkopf says the troops have met with very light resistance. When do you expect them, though, to encounter some heavy resistance at the rate this offensive is moving? Um, we as yet don't really know where the Republican Guard are. 
Uh, they clearly are going to be the, the major force that are, are going to put up any kind of fight. Um, if, if they're going to put up a fight at all, where they are, I don't know. And when, when we could expect to hit them, that is anyone's guess. We have limited video from what's happening at the front, of course, but we do know that the tanks rolled in first. Tell us what you think at this point in time about the, the strategies uh, of the Allies as they begin to enter a second day of this offensive. Well, what they'll be aiming to do, uh, my guess is, is to hit as hard and as fast as they can uh, with their tank forces. Um, probably using tanks such as the American M1 Abrams, the British Challenger, to punch their way through whatever light resistance there is. I don't think they'll be too concerned about what they leave behind in the sense of pockets of Iraqi troops. The, the tank force's main concern is to get as hard, uh, to get as far in as they possibly can and let, let others deal with the, uh, the, pockets of, uh, the pockets of troops. Would you expect a big, um, I'm sorry, sorry, would you expect a big Iraqi surge forward? Would they come forward to meet the Allied forces or would they wait for them to get to them? Whichever they do, they're going to be in trouble. Um, we could hope that they will come to meet us. Um, after all, the entire NATO doctrine, uh, for which certainly the British, the French, and the American troops will have trained, um, has been designed to counter very large moving bodies of, uh, of armor. Um, so therefore, were the Iraqis to come out and, and try and uh, pick a fight with us, then we would be extremely well placed to deal with that. Equally well, if they try and stay where they are and uh, just fight from what their positions that they've dug in, then we also have the ability to take them on. So whatever their tactics, whatever tactics the Iraqis uh, intend to use, we have the, certainly have the ability to deal with it. Considering the air bombardment that's been going on, how mechanized are the Iraqi mechanized units at this point in time? How well can they move? They've been dug in uh, sand for some months now. They've been subjected to a quite unbelievable bombardment. Um, they will certainly have taken an awful lot of casualties from the uh, tank casualties, vehicle casualties, from the bombardment. But in addition to that, the problem with a, a tank or a, an APC or, or a self-propelled artillery gun, it's a very complicated piece of machinery. If you don't use it, if you just let it sit around, um, things start to go wrong. It's much the same that if you park your car and don't use it for weeks on end, when you start, start it up the first time, the chances are it won't work. They haven't been able to do their maintenance on the vehicles. They haven't been able to keep them in a good running order. They may find problems when they want to use them. With the Allies surging forward on their own, with, in their own tanks and with their own ground forces, how important does the air bombardment continue to be at this point? Oh, that's very important. The uh, coalition forces will now switch their targeting. What they'll want to do is, um, is hit the Iraqi reserve forces in order to uh, prevent them or in order to reduce their ability to fight so that, as I said earlier, if they start to move, if they come out to try and pick a fight, then we'll be able to hit them as they move. And if they don't start to move, uh, then we can just pick them off while they're sitting in the ground. So whatever they do, we're going to use that, that continue to use that air power to hit them um, where they are. All right, Ben Rooney, he's a former tank commander for the British Army. We thank him for sharing his views with us from London. We'll be right back. to catch the uh, advancing allies into this fire trap right here. Now, uh, as the uh, video rolls, you'll see the American tanks uh, uh, come into view as the Iraqis then pull back into these positions behind in the face of the American advance. They see them in the distance, and then pretty soon you'll see them come into the screen, and they run into this minefield right here that tends to uh, slow them down. And what they intend to do, of course, is to catch the Allied forces in these interlocking fields of fire like this from these uh, firing positions, uh, causing them to deploy uh, before they can continue. Now, they know that the Allied tactic is to continue the advance, to move on in the face of such an ambush tactic, and they're actually counting on that happening uh, to uh, form the vice of this trap. And then as the uh, Allies continue the advance and follow up with even more tanks behind these, they close the trap uh, with these tanks, with these anti-armor weapons and all of this artillery uh, falling uh, in behind them, uh, hoping to catch them in that kind of a trap. 
The surprising thing is that apparently they've not been able to spring any of these traps. Uh, that can be explained by one of perhaps two reasons. One being uh, perhaps the artillery and air fire has uh, rendered these uh, traps ineffective, uh, gotten the infantrymen out of their holes, or two, the speed and violence with which the Allied offensive has been launched caught them totally by surprise and has been able to run right through these traps. We'll have to wait in the next couple of days to see exactly what it is that can explain this rate of advance. James, I think even the Allied commanders seem to be a little surprised at the speed of the offensive. In his statements, General Schwarzkopf had that uh, uh, look of, uh, uh, I'm not sure quite how to describe it, but he had that look uh, that a hunter has when he sees the, uh, uh, the ducks flying into his blind and he knows he's going to get a kill. And uh, he had that kind of uh, look about him to indicate that uh, uh, whether or not he was surprised, he could sense victory very soon. All right, James Blackwell, CNN's military analyst. Thanks for that. We'll be right back. There have been reports of life as usual in Baghdad as Iraqis face the Allied forces on the ground in Kuwait. For more on that, we go to CNN's Christiane Amanpour. She's standing by live in Baghdad tonight. Christiane? Molly, uh, the military communiques coming out of Iraq all day continue to claim Iraqi successes in the ground offensive. The latest military communique says that Iraqi forces have burned hundreds of Allied tanks and vehicles and killed or wounded hundreds of Allied troops. It also says that the Allies attempted to make an airborne landing in the southwest part of Kuwait City, but that the Iraqi forces repelled it. It also says Iraqi forces repelled Egyptian and uh, Saudi forces taking part in the ground offensive. The communique appears to have taken every report, various reports of the Allies' successes, and refuted each one of those. And in a statement that clearly appears to be taking advantage of um, restrictions placed on journalists covering the Allies, uh, military spokesman challenged the Allies to allow reporters to go and see and report on the successes they're claiming to have. Now in terms of military activity here today in Baghdad, there have been air raid sirens on and off all day starting early this morning. Tonight, about 45 minutes ago, there was another air raid warning, a loud explosion of some sort. We saw a lot of anti-aircraft anti artillery being fired in response and otherwise there's been no, uh, no other raids over Baghdad and life in the city has been going on as normal here. Um, as for Saddam Hussein himself, we were just um, handed a, a videotape a few minutes ago, uh, purportedly shot today, showing President Saddam Hussein chairing a meeting of the uh, ruling Revolutionary Command Council. Now Baghdad Radio has been playing all day President Saddam's morning message, his emotional and impassioned appeal to Iraqi people and the Iraqi forces to resist the Allied ground offensive by whatever means possible. When we went out on the streets today, as you would expect, several of the Iraqis we talked to predicted an Iraqi victory. Of course, Iraq will win the victory, and it is uh, certain, and I am sure the victory will be done 100%. Uh, 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 the victory will be for us, for our people, because our, gui uh, our uh, guide President Saddam Hussein is very uh, brave and he will could to uh, attack on the American and destroy them. Now others that we talked to um, displayed an air of real resignation and despondency when we asked many people whether they thought Iraq stood a chance of a military victory many of them shrugged and sort of said God only knows. Molly? Christian, two items to ask you about. Any mention in the Iraqi media about Iraqi soldiers surrendering or being taken prisoner? And the other item, any word on Allied POWs? The first item about Iraqi POWs in the military communique, the latest we've received here, um, they deny that. They say that none of their troops have surrendered or been captured. In terms of Allied POWs, no, no word from here on that. All right, thanks for that. CNN's Christian Amanpour, live in Baghdad. Dave. Thank you, Molly. We have just gotten some new video in from the fighting in Kuwait, and uh, this is uh, following the second Marine engineers as they penetrated Kuwait. Let's take a look at this video right now. Iraqi prisoners of war coming through. Iraqi 
Okay, we're watching a video we've just received. This is inside Kuwait. Those men on the horizon right there are what we call EPWs, enemy prisoners of war. Those are Iraqi troops. And burning oil wells, of course, a well there you can see burning in the background to the left of your screen. This video has just uh, been uh, given to CNN. We'll be receiving more of this kind of video, and as soon as we get it, we will present it here on CNN. Our coverage of the war in the Gulf will continue right after this.